Hello everyone! I hope that you're doing amazing wherever you are in the world. My name is Boom Shaka and I welcome you to my channel. I'm sorry I haven't done a video for the last couple of weeks. I just was kind of not feeling it for some reason. I was like, you know what? It's fine. If I don't feel it, I'm not going to do it. There's no reason to force it. But this week, I decided that there is this topic that I've been wanting to speak about for a long, long while now. It's kind of a topic that I'm obsessed with currently because of all the apocalyptic news on everywhere, you know, you kind of feel like mm, the world is going to end soon. Not that it will. I'm sure everything's going to be fine and nothing's really happening. It's just, it's just doom and gloom. But it kind of fascinates me because I really wish that we had some mode of figuring out if, if an apocalypse happened, if like something like the end of the world happened and, you know, only like five people were left on the planet. If I was one of those people, would I survive? Like, would, it, would I be one of those people who survived? And I was kind of thinking about it, and I decided to do this video, and I'm going to do another one next week. And it's going to be five reasons why I think INFJs would survive an apocalypse. So there's five qualities we have that will help. And next week, I'm going to do five qualities we have that will actually hinder us from surviving an apocalypse. It's weird, I know, <laughs> but I'm, I am very, very interested in this because in a lot of cases, I think that me as, as an individual, personally, I think I would be dead in two seconds um, if an apocalypse happened because there's so many things, so many tools, so many skills that I don't have. Not even understanding the fact that I'm spoiled as anything and I have all of these needs and I can't go one meal without feeling like I'm going to die of hunger and all of these random little things, right? Of course, I might adapt and things like that and that's one of the things I'm going to talk about. But in a lot of cases, I'm thinking to myself that I'm probably not going to survive which is fine. Not everyone's supposed to, right? Um, that's the whole survival, survival of the fittest, that's fine. But I wanted to do this video about INMGs in general. I think some of the qualities that we have will help us if we did end up in an apocalyptic situation. And next week, as I said, I'll do five reasons why I think we wouldn't survive because there are some things that are actually harmful to us in our personality traits. So the five reasons I think that we would survive, and these are obviously not, um, you know, all compounding, all rounding. So you might have some reasons why we, we might survive as well. So put them in the comments below so we can all talk about it. But the first reason is because we're creative. And I think our creativity comes from uh, like a deeper sense of intuition, of gut, gut instinct. And that kind of creative, intuitive sense that we have, our introverted intuition, that is going to be epically useful, very, very useful if there was an apocalypse of any kind. Because what are you going to be doing? You don't have the internet <laughs> to go to, most probably. You're not going to be able to Google things. Uh, you're not going to be like, okay, like you can't ask, you know, ask the crowd what the solution is. You have to rely upon yourself. And a lot of times you're going to be by yourself or you're going to be in a group of people who are going to be scared, fearful, um, you know, paranoid, things like that. And so no one's going to be thinking straight. Like if you're using your brain or your cere cerebral cortex to make decisions, it's not going to be functioning that well because it's going to be filled with fear. So a lot of us, what we're going to have to do is rely upon our intuition. And because it, INFJs are really good at that, we're really, really good. Th this is our thing. You know, we are, <laughs> if there's one thing that we have, it's our intuition. And because we've been spending all of our time from birth honing this skill, you know, by the time I get to my age, which is like around 40, um, it's pretty much honed. Like, it's not perfect, obviously. And I still have moments where I, I, I doubt it and I have things like that. But mostly, I've re I rely upon my intuition immensely. Almost in every decision I make, I rely r more on my intuition than on my uh, intelligence. And so when you're in an apocalyptic situation, I think intuition is going to be very useful because you're going to have to figure out all of these things. You have to make all these decisions not based on Google, not based on anything like that, but on based on intuition. Like, which direction should I go in? Okay, this is my, what my intuition says. This is what my gut says. You know, what should I take with me? This is what my gut, gut says. So you can have to follow your gut, your intuition, and I think that would be really useful for INFJs in general. So I think that's the first thing. We are creative and we're intuitive. And we always come up with, we're always trying to at least think outside the box and trying to come up with unique solutions to things rather than just going with the crowd, which is always going to be very useful in a situation where you can't go with the crowd because the crowd's going to lead you to death, right? Um, it's like, you know, are you going to jump off the cliff if everyone else is jumping off the cliff? No, you know, I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to go in this direction or do whatever else. I'm going to take the path that's not tro treading upon, tro 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 trodden upon. Um, so I'm going to take the path that's less, less, um, has less people on it, right? 
And so that one definitely is one of the reasons why I think INFJs would be very, very successful in an apocalyptic situation if they did rely upon their intuition. The problem is that we a lot of times don't rely upon it. We are we have our intuitive sense and saying something in our head and we're like, but 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 how do I know this? I don't know, I just know. It's your intuition telling you. You don't have to know why you know, you just know, right? And uh, and in that situation, in this really drastic situation, you're gonna have to not think but just follow the gut instinct, follow the intuition. Because it's it's leading you right and you don't even necessarily know how you got all that information. It's there in your brain somehow, right? Um, so that, as I said, creative, intuitive, two reasons definitely that we would be very successful. The third one is adaptable. And this kind of adaptability, this flexibility, this kind of view, uh, the du duality of views, we're able to look at things in a very uh, dual fashion so we can keep two sets of views, two sets of opposing views in our mind very easily without any without any internal struggle. I find it very easy to be like, yeah, I, I love that and I also hate it. And yes, I can believe in both of those things at the same time, it's totally fine with me. There's no, there's no thing inside of me that says, but I, I have to be on one side or the other. No, you don't. In any case, <laughs> so that's one of the things that we have, this duality. And you probably noticed this, this is one of the reasons why a lot of people think INFJs are bipolar or they self-diagnose as, they self-diagnose as bipolar because they think, oh my God, I'm always on one side or the other. I'm always going back and forth between two sides, but a lot of times I have these two sides within me s coexisting, um, and I don't know, is this normal, right? So I think that in an apocalyptic situation, this kind of duality of views would be very useful because you're a little bit more adaptable, a little bit more flexible, you're not rigid, you're not stuck in your views, you're not stuck on the path, you're not stuck in one way of doing things, and you have a little bit more flexibility, you can look at a situation and kind of gather all the information and and take everyone else's opinions and then make a decision that way very easily without getting stuck in a mold, you know? And that's one thing that is gonna be very useful, not being stuck in a mold because you can't be stuck in the mold because you're in a situation that's completely out of there, out of the normal purview, and you have to start kind of thinking really out of the box because otherwise you're gonna get killed, right? <laughs> or you're gonna die. You're not gonna survive, right? And so that's another reason why I think it would be very useful very, very useful to anyone who is you know, dealing with an apocalyptic situation. Um, I do know that my flexibility, my adaptability, my ability to, to mold myself to a new situation, I'll move to a new place and within days I will be a local or I, I'll be as local as, as can be and it's because of my adaptability, right? Adaptability, flexibility. Not saying that every INFJ is like that, we have levels for it for sure, but I think this is one of those traits that I've seen a lot of INFJs that I've spoken to. Um, so that's the third one. And then fourth, I was thinking, was our leadership skills. And the interesting things about INFJs, and I've spoken about this in previous videos, is that we are um, accidental leaders. Like, we're not like, oh, I'm gonna go in and be a leader, yay! Um, we kind of fall into the role, we're pushed into the role. Uh, mostly we accidentally fall into it because no one else wants to do it or everyone's looking at us be like, you know, you be the leader. You seem like the most logical choice and we're like, what? But why? Um, and I think that that's what's a, what could happen in an apocalyptic situation as well. Is like we're standing there thinking, okay, someone else, someone else take the le leadership role. I don't want to do it. And then everyone's like, no, but you have to. And I think that le that leadership role that we have, the ability to lead people based on our intuition, to be that kind of non-toxic, um, gentle leader, I think, is going to be very useful because you can't really, I think, be in a situation like that where everyone's scared, paranoid, and fearful, and then be like forcing them to do things that they don't want to do. It could result in conflict and even death. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> so I think that would be a really useful skill that we could bring to the situation. Um, again, something that we don't want to be, but we always end up being like it's just something that happens to us, right? Um, yeah, and so. Those are the f four or five things I've already spoken about. So creativity, uh, intuition, adaptability, leadership. Oh, I'm missing one. Uh, flexibility, clear creativity. Mm, what was the last thing that I was thinking about? Strategizing. Um, so I think that's one of the things that I was actually, I don't know if, I feel like this is something that we're really, really good at is strategi strategizing for the future. Like we have, foresight and again it's related to our intuition but I, I do notice that I'm kind of able to look ahead a little bit in the future maybe five years whatever and kind of gauge what's gonna happen and what I should be doing and how I should prepare for things and all of that 
And that kind of foresight, that kind of intuitive view into the future, that kind of strategizing, I think, again, would be very useful because not that you're looking forward to five years in the future as in an apocalyptic situation, you're probably just looking at like one week into the future or one hour, like what are we going to do in the next hour, next to stay alive. But even that kind of strategizing, that kind of foresight, that kind of using your intuition to build s a plan for the future, and because we are planners, I think that'd be really useful for us, and also for the people who are surrounding us, because what's going to happen is whoever we're kind of guiding or helping or being uh, in a group with, you know, they're going to use our skills on strategizing and planning and foresight to build a plan to make sure that the group stays, stays safe and, and um, you know, survives. Again, this is all based on my random thoughts that I sit up at night and think about, so a lot of it might be not accurate. Although I feel like if this was the situation that I was coming into, these are all the, situa these are all the qualities I would bring to the situation to make it better. Um, and so I'd love to hear from you. What do you think? What are the different qualities that an INFJ would bring to the situation? I really, really think that this is something we need to think about because not that I'm saying it's coming or not, but like it's really interesting to think about these kind of things, you know? Like, life nowadays is so soft and gentle and, and mostly serene that, you know, I really wonder, like, if I was thrown into a situation like that, would I literally just die in two seconds because I'm so, so not used to conflict, so not used to dealing with all that kind of stuff? I just get everything given to me. You know, I can just go and buy food. I can just put down money and get whatever the hell I want. So will I just literally die if I was in this kind of situation? I don't know. Um, anyway, so this is where I'm going to end it. And yeah, comment below. Let me know what qualities you think you're going to bring to the situation as an INFJ. Um, and again, next time I'll do a video on what I think uh, would be our downfall. <laughs> and a lot of it will have to do with socializing, as you can imagine. All right. Thank you so much for listening. Bye for now.